I'm going to demonstrate uh, a little project I created. Uh, I call it the ESP8266 12E DHT Thermostat IoT. And what this basically is, uh, it uses a DHT uh, digital humidity uh, sensor to get temperature and humidity readings. And uh, based, based on those readings, it allows uh, the relay switch to turn off and on. So this is the ESP8266 unit and this is the data line coming in. This is what I use to program it. Uh, this is an alternate power source. Actually when I'm using this thing, in fact I've been using it in my pump house for about a month. Um, it's been really cold out here and the pipes in my pump house froze because my thermostat in there failed. So I decided to build my own and this is it. It uses this ESP8266 and this DHT22 uh, uh, to sense the temperature. And underneath this thing I've got a little transistor which is also connected to this 3 volt relay. So what happens is uh, when this reaches a certain temperature the light will turn on <clears throat> when it drops down below a certain temperature and then when it gets to a certain temperature, that uh, light will turn off. So I'll, when I have it in the pump house, I have it set uh, just to keep the pipes from freezing, around 32 to uh, 38 degrees, keep it in that range. And uh, as you can see right now, I've got it connected to this uh, extension cord and this little light bulb here, just for some demonstration purposes. And uh, now I'm going to show you how the web page works. So I built this web page to interface with the thermostat and uh, store some data. So right now I've got it set with a real narrow margin here of 66 and 67 degrees. Right now uh, it's at 68 degrees so if it were to drop down to 66 it would turn on. In fact I'm going to go ahead and change these variables so that uh, we can do that. I'm going to take this up to 70 and this one at uh, 68. This should turn the light on. There it goes. Now, when I clicked on submit, uh, what happened <coughs> in the program is it took these variables here and wrote them to a file. So there's basically a properties file. And the reason I'm doing that is because when the power goes out or something happens and this uh, ESP unit has to restart. I don't want it to go back to some sort of default uh, settings and then have to reset this every time. And in other words, if I change things here on this web page, I want it to stick. I want it to, if it turns off and comes back on, I want it to use the same settings I was using before. Uh, so this is kind of self explanatory. The, this is the temperature that the heat will turn on. And of course, this is the temperature the heat will turn off and we've got our sample rate. Now this is basically how often the program is going to read the temperature and write it to this data file here. So right now it's 60 seconds. So this this is doing every minute. And you can see on the data here it shows you uh, whether the temperature or the, the uh, switch was off or on and what the temperature was. Same with humidity. These are just Google charts that uh, are using the data that it's getting from the program. And the maximum chart data, this is the maximum elements that you're going to have in this chart. If you start going too much over 100, uh, you could start having trouble just because it's sending a lot of data out to Google. And the file that is storing all this data uh, could start having problems. If, if there's a memory issue, if it starts getting too large, uh, there won't be enough memory on the ESP to handle it. And basically your data is just going to disappear. It's going to uh, vaporize. But you can always click on clear data and clear out any bad data and restart it again. Um, or you could even just set this down to 10. Oh, light just turned off. And as you can see, our chart has changed a little bit. Um, anyways, uh, that's how it works. I don't know if you can see this here, but that's the little the little window 
of optimum range. In fact, I'm going to make this larger just so it's easier to see that. And there you have it. So this is the range, uh, you know, between 60 and 75. It's just, this will change as you change these settings. So that's pretty much it. Uh, <clears throat> does some data logging, takes all that data, puts it in a file, reads it, and displays it on this nice Google chart here. And like I said, I've been using this uh, thermostat now for a while and uh, it's been working great it's actually been keeping my pump house at the optimum temp temperature and my pipes have not been freezing so i'm actually anxious to get it back out there um still winter time around here but uh had a little break so i i thought i'd do this video and uh share it with you hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching my video Now I'm going to go over the, the code for uh, this application, my thermostat. Um, basically you've got some libraries here and I will include these libraries with the GitHub download and I'll post a link to that download uh, here on this video uh, so you can download the source code and libraries for this application. Uh, we've just got some variables here, some constants and variables, uh, Wi-Fi password, SSID, uh, heat on and heat off are two variables that are going to be used throughout the program. This is the, to determine uh, what temperature the heat goes on and what temperature the heat goes off. The relay state <coughs> basically is the relay switch on or off. And we've got uh, a couple of file names. The first one is a properties file which stores uh, data like the um, interval to uh, check the temperature um, and also whether or not uh, uh, heat is off, heat is on, things like that. And this is a data file. This is what's going to store the data um, for the interval, basically 60 seconds or whatever the interval is set to. And uh, the data lines, this is, these are all just default values. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on there. Open up the web server. We get down to our first function. Just get temperature. And this basically just reads the DHT sensor and sets the humidity and temp uh, global variables that are going to be used throughout the program. And then down here, it basically turns off or on the relay switch depending on uh, whether or not it's appropriate, if it's uh, within the range or not. And we get down here to clear data file. Clear data file uh, is basically used when you click on that link, clear data file. And it's just going to open the file to write and not write anything to it. So it basically just clears out the file. And remove file line. Now this is basically, so once we got to uh, 100 lines, the way we have it set up uh, before, it's going to start removing the first line. So what it does is it basically opens the file, reads it line by line, and writes that file data into another file, except it skips the first line. And then it takes that file and renames it to the original data file. And that's uh, how that one line is being replaced. Otherwise, the file would just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually crash the program because you wouldn't have enough memory. Or you just have to stop writing to it uh, once you got to a certain distance. But I want to store all that data sort of continuously. And yeah, it's going to lose data after that 100 lines, but at least I've got the most recent data. Update data file. This is a function that is called basically uh, every time we want to update the data file, depending on the interval. And it's just going to write the uh, settings to the file. If it needs to, it's going to remove a line. In other words, if it's reached its max file data. And we get down here to read data file. This is specifically to read the data from the file and format it in such a way that uh, Google can use it in Google Charts. All right. Set HTML. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's just writing out all the HTML for the Google Charts and uh, everything else that you see on the web page. So there's a lot of HTML here. 
and uh, there it is. This valid number, this is just a little function that we use for some error checking uh, so that when you click the submit button, um, it can check to make sure you're actually entering numbers and not uh, something else. And here's the handle submit function. So when you click submit, this is the code that gets ex executed. And it basically is just going to go through those uh, form variables and come down here and it's going to set those form variables into the properties file. And your settings get updated. And handle root, this is just when you go to the base uh, URL or IP address for the site. And it's just going to get your HTML and all the data there for the first uh, client. And then you get down to your main setup function. <clears throat> this is uh, just setting up the Wi-Fi and getting connected. It's, uh, starting up the DHT sensor, opening up SPIFs for uh, writing to files. And the first time this is run, or any time it's powered up, it's going to try and open the data file. Now if it can, that's great, it, it, but if it can't, it's going to say, well, there, there's no data file, we need to create one. So it's going to do a format, and then it's going to come down and actually create the file. And write the default values that are the defaults at the very top into that file. Otherwise, it's just going to read the file and say, okay, uh, these were the last uh, variable values that were set. Let's get those and let's set those up so that we can use them throughout the program. And towards the end here, we're just going to start to uh, get things going. We're going to read the data file. <clears throat> That's basically going to set up the number of lines, get temperature so that we now have an accurate temperature start a new session and update to that to the file. So when this thing starts up, that's one of the things it's going to do. This just sets up your handlers. And as you can see here, one's inline. These other ones are functions that were mentioned earlier. And start up your server. And we get the loop function, which runs continuously. And based upon the amount of time and uh, whether or not the interval is passed, it's going to uh, get the temperature and update the file. So this gets run based on the interval. I think we had it set to 60 in the previous uh, example. And it's variables. So you can change it. And it'll, it'll update the temperature in the file due to that interval. And this just handles your clients. That's basically it. Um, I find it uh, works really well. It's uh, super useful. And I hope you enjoyed it and can use this in uh, some of your